Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 543, where Drew and myself will be talking about comics originally releasing December the 11th, 2019. Before Drew and I get into what's coming out in your local comic book shops this coming Wednesday, Drew, we took last week off to celebrate Thanksgiving and enjoy some time with family, so we've probably got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Yeah, we got some feedback stacking up, and uh, we've got uh, all kinds of stuff on the slate for today, so let's kick it right off. Eric Wolf wants us to know, he says, Drew, I think you mentioned you like online comics. Um, have you tried the Hoopla app? It has tons of free comics, including Independence. You can access it using a library card. Yes, Eric, I do know about Hoopla. Um, my Fairfield County Library System has Hoopla, and so I have it on my phone and my computer. And um, like many people, my boss makes a dollar while I make a dime, so I poop on company <laughs> time. And so I take my little Hoopla app into the the, the office, the old the, the bathroom office, and read comics on on that Hoopla app. Pretty much every day at work, so uh, just just to squeeze that little extra in there, <laughs> <laughs> squeeze that little extra in there. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's Hoopla's fantastic. Uh, I'm currently what am I reading on there right now? Uh, that's pretty awesome. Pulling up, I'm pulling it up right now on my phone. And now you have the urge to take a poop. <laughs> uh, Kingdom Come. Uh, ah. which is, and I have uh, The New Frontier after that, the deluxe edition. I just finished My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies by Ed Brubaker, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, and then some stuff I pull down, and I never get a chance to finish it, and it just gets returned because it automatically returns in like three weeks in my library, and you have to pull, you have to take it out again. But the cool thing is it keeps your space, your place where you left off, so... Um, I don't know if it's different for every uh, library system, but uh, I think we're allowed having 10 at a time. So, um, you know, but if you get 10 hardcovers, that's that's a lot, a lot of stuff to read. Yeah, no so, kidding. So, but yeah, it's really cool, man. It's a good app. It's very stable, good pinch and zoom, real clear, high quality. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really nice. And, yeah, if you if your library system doesn't have it, um, I think you can just like get, go to a a library close to you or in your area, even even if it's not like local, and sign up online for their card, just so you can get the Hoopla access. You don't have gotcha. to if you if yours doesn't have it, you can still find one that'll let you get uh, a, a library card digitally and then get the Hoopla access, which is pretty cool. And then you're doing these on tablet or on phone? I do mine on the phone most of the time because I read a lot on my tablet, um, w comics otherwise too. So, um, but, but but I don't have, I don't read like on Comicsology. I don't mm -hmm. I don't read a lot of that on my phone. I usually save that for my tablet. So, um, yeah, it it's different, different audiences. But I, I recommend it wholeheartedly. So yeah, Eric, uh, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Something you should, everybody should check out for sure. Uh, just Joe says, two weeks or three ago, you guys were going through your spec picks, and I think you asked Kyle about badass, and I think he passed saying, it looks a little hokey, or something like Sounds that. Sounds like me. So far, yeah. we're on point. <laughs> uh, Yo, this book was actually quite good. Might not be spec pick, but well worth a read. Yeah. So, uh, I don't recognize that conversation at all. So, if you say we did, we had it, Kyle. We had it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what. Yeah, do you remember find. Badass? I do not. I don't remember Badass at all. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, because uh, it's an acronym for the Bureau of Alien Detention and Supernatural Sightings, and oh. That, that's what that that threw me off. Yeah. That's okay. Now it's coming back. Now it's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so um, something to check out there. A second opinion. Yeah, from Antarctic Press. So I looked at it because it was a smaller publisher, but uh, I have a, a well-known fear of acronyms, so <laughs> I may have to try to look past that and see if this is something I can do. 
Kyle's well-known fear of acronyms. Yes, yes. Well yes, documented. Yes. Hence the reason I have not jumped fully on board with the uh, 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 C4 FAP. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is rubs you the wrong, the wrong way a little bit. In that, yeah, that's the only reason I haven't. You know. <laughs> Uh, Relatively Geeky says, thanks for shouting out our cheap comic book love. Yes, we um, we highlighted um, uh, Relatively Geeky Network's uh, podcast family. They uh, <coughs> they have a... a the ever-dwindling quarter bin love. The or quor- yeah, quarter bin um, podcast uh, that uh, he has trouble finding. And I did see that... Uh, one of our old LCSs, Capital City Comics, did their Black Friday sale, and it was uh, all their dollar comics were a quarter. I was like, "Ah, oh, man, we should have went on Black Friday <laughs> for old time's sake to get back some quarter comics again. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Fujiko says, when you read comics, do you read in silence while watching TV or listening to music? And if it's TV or music, what are you watching and listening to? I cannot passively do anything but comics. Um, there are some things I can do, like I will watch, uh, you know, comedic television shows while playing games on my phone and things like that. There are a few things I can do passively. Comics, silence, and reading. I can't, my brain cannot separate the two. I can do it. I um I have a weird ritual. Uh, Aside from the pooping at work and reading comics. <laughs> Aside from that, yeah. Uh, okay, so I don't don't watch TV or listen to music, but I have a a machine, a, a sound machine, and it, <laughs> sorry, not not the Miami sound machine. <laughs> I have it's a it, and it has to be do, 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 do. sorry, case, sorry, that was in my head now. Thanks for that. <laughs> it has to be on uh, thunder, a thunderstorm. <laughs> so I turn the th- I turn the thunderstorm on, and then I get my my comics out. And I start reading with thunderstorm playing in the background, and that's like my little nighttime ritual. Now that has I, got to be the most bananas <laughs> thing I've ever heard okay. in my life. Yeah. Every night, man, that's the way I read my comics. Now I <laughs> like I read like on the couch and stuff when stuff's going on, but I don't like I don't like to have TV or music going on because that's distracting. Not like my thunderstorm, which is calming. <laughs> so to use Spider Man is synonymous with a flood. What? With a rainstorm and a flood, all these superheroes bring back, you know, visions of rain in the background. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do have a rain. I have a rain setting and a thunderstorm setting. Oh, it just depends. Sometimes on the mood. I mix it up, but for the most part, it's the thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> you just got a glimpse inside my psyche. Uh, Sorry see, about that, folks. ladies and gentlemen. Even I learned some things on these <laughs> question and answer sessions. Uh, wolf. Since then, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Image Comics Kurt Pyre's Olympia number one was awesome. An awesome read. Straightforward world building and the plot and narrative flowed smoothly. One of the best reads of the week. Well done by the whole creative team. That's sitting on my stack. I'm going to fire up the old Thunder Machine a little bit, and I'm going <laughs> to read that tonight. That sounds awesome. Uh, that's one I've been I've been putting off. So I'm t- that's good to know that that's a good one. Oh, okay, yeah, that's the one with the... Uh, okay. Gotcha. Josh asks, Are you going to any Comic Cons this year, big or small? I want to go to Heroes Con or Baltimore, maybe. Baltimore? I've been hearing nothing but good about Baltimore. Everybody who said something said, Baltimore is supremely underrated. Yeah, I hear, I hear Baltimore and Heroes are the, are the two really great uh, comic cons to go to um, that are left um, I, don't, I don't know I would like to go to some regional stuff I'd like to get my comics ready to display and sell and I still have some organizing to do to get to that level because um, uh, I'd like to do some selling shows but I wouldn't I wouldn't go to a big con for that I would go to some of the smaller you know, some of our local Buckeye cons where it's mostly vendor setups. Yeah, well, there's one in Which Par- are my, are, yeah. I'm a big fan of those cons. Yeah, and there's a Parkersburg one that looks pretty decent. And, um, you know, you know, maybe you get a, a table at a, a, a larger con, pop culture con, but probably not like a C2E2 or anything. I wouldn't want to try to sell there. 
Oh my goodness! Anything it's like by Reed obnoxiously Pop. expensive. Yeah, Reed CD. Pop charges way too much for that stuff, so I, I don't think I'd, I'd want to do that. I'd just go to something a mid to small, probably. Yeah, but unless we end up going to like uh, Indianapolis Con or end up making a trip, I don't think we have too much planned on our our Mm-mm. our near and our close agenda, do we? Uh, I kind of blew uh, C two E two for Kyle. Yeah, he, he could he had a free pass for that, and I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to go. But you could still go without me. I had snuggled up and kissed butt to the wife to get permission, but I had forgot the co-host to get permission. So uh, I, will, you, I will learn my abilities and try to get still, all my ducks in a row you next can, time. You can go without me. I will I will be raped in a moment in Chicago by myself, <laughs> sir. That, I cannot do it. Is that how it works? Yes. <laughs> they, they, they prey on weakness and individuality, and I don't think I can do it. You can't do it. So, yeah, uh, if we do, we'll, we'll probably stay close to home, and we'll we'll let you know if, we, if we're going anywhere. We'll, we'll, we'll let everybody know that where we're going, so we can do meet up if we have to, if you guys are in the in the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, Glenn says, fellow comic collectors, I have a question. I'm reorganizing, uh, and some books I have found I have multiple copies of. What do you guys do with your multiple copies? Do you store them in the in the run that they're in, or keep them separate? And then you give them away or sell them. Store them in the run they're in, sell them. And if they're worth nothing, put them in grab bags and try to sell them. Okay. You could, Yeah, those are good ideas. Um, I would probably, I would, yeah, I'd probably keep it right there so it's right next to the, so the duplicates are together. Yeah. Um, and then, and, and maybe when I got enough of them, build a box. Um, something we're doing. Uh, where I work, we're doing a uh, we're gonna we're doing a, a comic book drive, and we're gonna send a box of comics that we collect to troops overseas. Nice. Um, there's a there's a company or an organization called um, supportourtroops.org, and they do all kinds of like care packages and stuff. And we, uh, my colleague down the hall. Uh, Professor Allen, who's part of Relatively Geeky, it was his idea, and so we're collecting comics for that, and we're going to send a big box of those at the end of next week, I think. Um, we're going to we're going to uh, get those down there so they can s- just send them over overseas, and there'll be some comics being read at wherever people are deployed. It'll be kind of cool. Very cool. Very very cool. But yeah, yeah, give them away. Take them to children's hospitals. Dump them off. Um, you know, you get them out of your collection. Keep the <coughs> nicest one if you want. You know, make sure that your run is pristine. Um, but give those reader copies away. I think that's a great idea. Or sell them. Sell them. A few yeah, I've got I've got a pile of uh, essentially default and just kind of bulk comics that uh, I'm going to do a couple of things through the scouts and talk about collecting. Oh, that's cool. Uh, one one of the things that the, that's an optional thing to talk about is collecting and how to do collections. So I kind of do that now. I'll take a bunch of bulk comics and get them out to the kids while I'm there as well. So you're going to tell people how to collect and keep your collect neat collections neat and in. It'll be the, one of those do as I say, not as I do type of things. <laughs> I'm not going to invite them into the the bowels of my house to see the things I'm talking about that I'm lying. But yeah, <laughs> I'm going to tell them what they should be doing, not tell them about. How difficult it is to be 38 with three children and keep life organized. I'd like them to continue to have some hope in their life and not really just crush them with that. So, if we, you know, I'll keep it. I'll keep it surface level if that's okay with you. That's part two. Yeah, exactly. As they get a little, bit, all right, it's time for some truth time. All right, you guys are older now. now let's, right. let's, get, let's keep it real. Uh, well, those were some great questions. Keep those things coming. We love. Uh, we love comments, questions, reviews gripes everything you 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 lay out us it, it's awesome we love to hear from you you can send us uh, an email at our gmail account comics for fun and profit at gmail.com um, you can follow us on twitter and send us questions that way we're comics fun profit on twitter we are comics for fun and profit on instagram and we're comics for fun and profit on facebook so the only really the Twitter is the only one we couldn't get comics yeah, for think, fun and profit because it was too I think long. Was working on a Tinder account for us as well or something. So. Oh baby, <laughs> you can swipe right on me. Is that what? You, is it right? Is good? I have no idea. I'm right so is, old. Yeah, right. It's probably good. <coughs> um, uh, so we'd we'd love to hear from you. All that stuff's in the show notes. Um, since last we spoke, uh, I had some problems with our website people, and have killed our website. 
So R.I.P. Comics fun comics fun profit dot com is no more. Uh, so our basically our website web server media server is going to be the pod the Podomatic site, and that oh, okay. that's in the show notes show notes as well. Um, and that'll have a little bit of our information and ways to connect with us. But the best way is, is through our show notes. Um, or fa- in Facebook. It, yeah, in any of our around. social media accounts. is just the best way to contact us that way. At some point, um, my brother has like four IT degrees, and he's going to build us a site from scratch at some point. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It, you know, but we, he just talked about those kids and and <laughs> those three kids he has and how I'm busy in the middle he is. of like three video games as well. Yeah, and, so. You know, Mandalorian has a new yeah, one I haven't yeah. watched yet. So it'll be like... Um, 2040 <laughs> when we do that so bookmark that page ladies and gentlemen <laughs> bookmark that page so we better secure that uh url name right right now. that's right uh, domain name we need that um but so yeah if you go looking for it you're not going to find our site anymore um and of course uh i think that's all i said everything right yeah i hit everything um and i was reminded that it's comicron top 10 time so yeah. we do have a sneak look at the numbers from November and uh, take a look at, over at Comicron.com at what sold when uh, in November. And it's some pretty big numbers. Again, uh, of course Marvel is uh, takes the unit share. Again, 42%. So they sold uh, 40% of the comics into retail shops. DC took 32%, um, very strong numbers from them. Image, uh, 7.87. So uh, without Walking Dead and Saga, it fills it. It really mm-hmm. fills it. Um, but that's still a solid number. Um, Boom is now in fourth place with 3%. And IDW right behind them with Dark Horse and Dynamite following behind. And then everybody else that's uh, making it that last 5 or 6%. Uh, for the month of November, um, it's down 24% compared to October, the month before. Um, and November this year versus November of last year is up 3%, though. So that's good. Um, year to date, we're still lagging a little bit behind. So um, year to date, 2019 versus 2018. 18 down about 1.42 percent um, in comic sales, so we'll see if we can bounce back with a strong December. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if we'll be able to. So yeah, it might December be flat. Definitely not a big selling month. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think tr- like trades and hardcovers are usually pretty good because a yeah. lot of gift giving and stuff. But um. You know, there's always a funky week where it's like a missing week, so you yeah, those sales get Christmas falls on a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, and so that we'll lose that week completely, mm-hmm. and so that that those sales won't they'll get booted into the next month, and sometimes Diamond does shenanigans with the way they count stuff, and you can't trust their numbers anyway half the time. So y- yeah, I, I I have a I have a feeling we're going to be below last year. Um, but maybe we'll get lucky and there'll be a big boost. We'll see. Yeah. Which makes sense as the digital market continues to, you know, take a, at least a little bit of the share. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the the years of a 10% growth year over year are, are yeah. gone. If you're looking at, you know, simply paper. <laughs> if we had the ability to, you know, look at digital and, you know, we could see where the market's going. But oh, we yeah. unfortunately do not have access to that. Yeah, and trades and hardcovers have long ago surpassed uh, floppy comics and they continue to be you know the leader in comic sales by far so you know i don't see that going away i mean i mean you hear more and more at least anecdotally you hear a a lot of people sampling and going moving to trade moving to trade Mm -hmm. Um, and then people are using this hoopla app you know and you you know you're you're getting collections and, and and trades and ogns that way so, um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I mean, I'm glad it's close to flat, you know, if it's mm-hmm. only down 1.4, there's a chance it could, 
it would be flat or maybe be up a little bit. So that is good, but um, yeah, I think you're you're right. <coughs> the days of the big jumps are are probably over. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's look at our top ten. Um, we've got uh, New Mutants number one taking the top spot. It's a four ninety nine Marvel book. Uh, X Men number two takes rank uh, the second slot. We've got Absolute Carnage number five at number three. Uh, in third place. Mm-hmm. X-Force number one takes the fourth spot. Fallen Angels number one takes the fifth slot. Deadpool number one takes the sixth place. Then Amazing Spider-Man 33 uh, in seventh. Until we finally have an, a non-Marvel book, which is Undiscovered Country. That first issue uh, gets eighth place. It is returnable, so those numbers have been reduced. Um. Uh, and then we have a DC book, finally, which is Batman 82, the acetate cover, back into the top 10 um, at rank 9. And then Amazing Spider-Man 34 at rank 10, rounding out the top 10, which is 8 Marvel, 1 Image, 1 DC. Um, so, Kyle, when you look at those... Uh, what's New Mutants? What's the number to top the list? Oh, I think these are all pretty low. Um, I think you're right. I think, I honestly think New Mutants might be the only thing above 100,000. Yeah. I'm going to give X-Men 2 a chance, at being, but I think it's just top two are the only ones that are above 100,000. And I'll go, I'll give New Mutants 125. Just because oh. of maybe some cover stuff, but I'll I, go over I don't that. think X-Men 2 is over. And I'll go over that. Gotcha. I'm actually going to write these down so I can reference. Oh, we'll remember. We never remember. <laughs> we always know that I'm right and you're wrong. <laughs> That's why I'm writing these down. That's exactly yeah. why I'm writing this down. Uh, in the graphic novel list, we've got Deceased Hardcover. What a great story that was. Tom Taylor, okay. man. Uh, then a Firefly Hardcover. The Mortal I Hulk. I that up and read that in hardcover form. You like Firefly? Yes, sir, definitely. Really? Because I think there's been a multiple volumes of Firefly. Mm-hmm. I, I've read through a f- several of them. Joss Whedon's brother was doing the one prior to this one. I've read through some of them. I didn't oh, do okay. the latest one, though. So you, would you consider yourself a brown coat? I would, sir. Wow. Okay. Nine nine episodes, and you're that into it. And a movie, my friend. Don't forget the movie. Don't forget the movie. That's true. Yes. Uh, Mortal Hulk, Volume 5, uh, takes the third slot. Uh, November, Volume One. Well, I don't remember what that is. That must have <coughs> went below my know. radar. I'm not sure what November is, so I don't think I read. It's that. the month before December. Yeah, interesting. Uh, Superman Year One hardcover, so good. Uh, Legend of Korra Part Two takes the sixth slot. A Journey to Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker Allegiance in rank seven. League of Legends Lux in 8th place. Savage Avengers Volume 1 and 9th. And Stranger Things, this volume uh, 6. No, it's about 6. Um, and that's in 10th place. So tune in next week and we'll get some real concrete numbers to those. <laughs> now, to take the top spot, you would have thought Marvel shipped the most books. Mm-hmm. Not the case. DC actually shipped 127 items, 96 of them comics, and 31 of them graphic novels. Now, of course, a lot of those are a dollar higher B covers, which would we discern- determine that's around 20, mm-hmm. that they do A and B covers. And then so they do the acetate and the hard and the cardstock, and one of them's like a dollar more or whatever. Um. So the, yeah, those those count as multiple SKUs. Um, but still, they shipped more than Marvel for the first time in a long time. Um, Marvel still didn't slouch too much. They shipped 120 things, with 84 uh, being comics and 36 being graphic novels. Image did uh, 40 comics and 15 
trades to get, <coughs> to get their 55 uh, total shipped and third place. And then IDW way out shipped Boom and way out, and so did Dark Horse, but Boom still took third place or fourth place. So with only shipping um, 19 comics. So hats off to them for their for being able to do that with uh, much less uh, much l- l- less comics than some of the uh, uh, publishers that kind of flooded more more things out than them. Gotcha. So uh, question here you go. Drew. Yes. Uh, November Volume One was the Matt Fraction um, hardcover that they released directly to uh, hardcover form. Oh, okay. So it was it didn't it was not a comic first. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Interesting. So it's uh, Matt Fraction and Elsa Cartier on art. Well, that's something I'll um, look for in Hoopla. Mm-hmm. All right. So we uh, will tune in next week. We'll figure out um, what those numbers really were and how close we were to guessing them. Now let's take a look at the old FOC. Of course, the FOC is our final order cutoff. It's our last opportunity to add some books to our pre to our pull list or things before they come out. Uh, kind of an, a second bite at the apple. Maybe we have a little bit more information about stuff, or perhaps you've perhaps you've picked up a couple uh, books along the way that you want to make sure you're grabbing the next ones on. Um, we get a nice little list curated by Eric at Cowabunga Comics. Um, these things are given to us this evening and then they're due by midday monday if we want to add anything take anything away or do anything on our pool list there's also some foc exclusive items uh show night contains any details if you want to find yourself a list just like this or get on cowabunga's mailing perhaps um we get a nice little curated thing from uh, eric and he's featured a few items like batman 86 james tinian the fourth taking over tony daniels on art we have a Daphne Byrne, number one, another Hill House item from DC. Uh, yeah, DC Black Label. Uh, we got Laura Marks writing that one. We have The Clock by Matt Hawkins on Image Comics. Of course, a Top Cow imprint because it's Matt Hawkins. And Marvel's number one from Marvel Comics, Alex Ross and Jim Kruger on that one with a Alex Ross cover. But, Drew, we're going to see if we can find anything in here that we need to make sure we add on our list or anything that we need to mm-hmm. change. Uh, let's start in Dark Horse. And Eric, see some of Eric, these things are coming out in uh, January. Yeah. And then some things coming out in March. And Eric wanted to note that uh, something not being offered is the 1 in 100 Wonder Woman Jim Lee sketch variant. Um, mm-hmm. They're not going to offer that through FOC, uh, through Cowabunga. Um, they said that it is pre-selling on eBay for less than 80 bucks, and that's where you should get it. And he was pretty down on um, DC not being able to uh, offer a $10 book, 1 in 100 um, variant on a $10 book for to get anybody excited about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it is available, just not just not through those guys. There's your crone number three, Drew, as you call it. I, of course, call it crony. <laughs> the Art of Cuphead. Not big into art books, but that is cool. I always like looking at that thing. Of course, Studio MDHR making one of my favorite games of a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. Based on art styles from the 1930s, a highly, highly, highly stressful and evil platforming game. This is Cuphead? Cuphead. Love that game. The Art of Doom Eternal. Another one of my favorites is OG Doom, so it's nice to see some of the artwork for the newest in- iteration of that game. The final issue of Ruby Falls. I don't understand how that is can only be a four issue miniseries. Seems like we're just getting into this mystery and it's gonna be cl- closing up, but oh, okay. We'll see how it goes triage ending ending as well yep yeah that's that's that should be interesting how they wrap that up Seems another strange in, oh go ahead well there's another stranger things volume launching 
Yeah, beating that one to death. Yeah. And everything number five, which might be an ongoing, I guess. No, I, I thought it. I thought it was a a limited series. Um, it's a really good series too. Which one was that one? Everything. Everything. Oh, everything okay. number five. It's about like this giant um, Walmart type uh, store. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember the solicit on that. Yeah, where, um, but it's like kind of evil and so Walmart gotcha <laughs> yeah so exactly Walmart yeah. <laughs> there's like there's like trolls living underneath the, the building gotcha. gotcha just like yeah just like Walmart yeah there you go <laughs> down to see what DC has to offer for us more giants birds yeah. of prey giant number one so another one. There was the other one. And as Eric highlighted, we do have the first. Is this the first James Tinian Batman? Yep. Yep. Thanks for paying attention when I talked about that earlier. Well, I wasn't sure if it was the first, though. I apologize. Yes, it seems to be the first. A new day in Gotham City, but not the same old Batman with Bane vanquished and one of his longtime allies gone. Batman has to start picking up the pieces and stepping up his game. Batman has a new plan for Gotham City, but he's not the only one. Deathstroke has returned as well under a mysterious new contract that could change everything. Beginning a whole new chapter in the life of the Dark Knight, the epic art team of Tony Daniels and Danny Miki are joined by the new series writer James Tinian IV. So King goes to 85. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we're, we're, we're moving on from our, our dear butler, Alfred. We've moved on to Lucius Fox is what I'm I'm hearing. Um, so we're going to be a little bit more James Bondy with our Batman from this point out. Lucius Fox being a little closer to a Q than an Alfred. And of course pulling in Lucius Fox's son, I imagine, for a lot of this as well. So I think we're going to get a little more gadget heavy with Batman going forward because of the change from Alfred to Lucius Fox. Mm. Okay. So I'm intrigued to see what kind of tech we get with this and what we do going forward. Well, tune in, you know, Tinian. It'll be a six-parter, eight-parter. Hey, 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 how about you just enjoy and hope for the best? Nope. Poo-poo it. <laughs> Poo-poo it, sight unseen. Um, we've got <sighs> Bir- Birds of Prey Giant, number one, and Crisis on Infinite Earths Giant, number one. I, I believe these are... Uh, Redos of Walmart. Well, I'll be, yeah, the great Satan Walmart books as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, this Crisis book looks pretty interesting. I've checked that out. I'm, there you go. In fact, they they all they all have been pretty good. Yeah, yeah, uh, we say that, but they've all been fairly good stories. They've all all been pretty good, and and now that they, I get it now. Why? Yeah, the comic shop should have been mad. Hey, this good quality stuff that you're giving to this one company and not letting us sell until much, much, much later. I get it now. I get it. There you go. Daphne Byrne. Um, Again, I've talked about this for just a moment during uh, Eric's spotlight of it. Yeah. The Hill House imprint. Uh, Laura Marks. But but this is a Hill House imprint, but he's not writing it, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so we've got Laura Marks from TV's Ray Donovan. I've heard of that show, but never seen it. The Expanse and The Good Fight. And, Must be a streaming thing. And horror art legend Kelly Jones from The Sandman and Batman Red Rain. Ooh, look at that. Ex Machina Compendium. Oh, Oh, it's only the, it's only half. That's, I was gonna say that's that's the first half. It's a it's uh, you know, you can get it for thirty at your price. That's not bad at all. It's got one through twenty five plus Ex Machina special one and two. I think I bought most of Ex Machina in dollar bins anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so my whole my whole run is probably less than sixty bucks. There you go. Dollar Comics: The Brave and the Bold one ninety seven. That is your scarecrow. Ah, okay. He's reprinting Brave and the Bold 197 starring Batman and Catwoman. Tale of the Earth 2 wedding of Batman and Catwoman. Da, 
Anybody you know reading Legion? The new, new Legion launch? Huh. I have a, I've I kind of set that out. I tried it. I like sampled it a little bit, and I'm just like, eh, I don't know enough about who these people are, and it, I seem lost. So I'm just gonna st- sit it out and wait for somebody to tell me it's really great. There you go. Wonder Woman seven fifty. That's the. That's the ten dollar book. They're doing the era treatment, the decades treatment. Dare Chu taking over the reins of the uh, variant covers on Supergirl. Continuing that. Oh, they look pretty good. Very good. He does great work. Again, that digital style, all that. Very cool. Lots of Wonder Woman 750. Um, I'm going to say now it won't be near the amount of sales of no. either detective or action. Yeah, action. Yeah, but yeah, it's not it's not a thousand either. Correct, exactly. But I guess you know the <laughs> DC might not be around in 250 issues. <laughs> How dare you, sir? How long is that? That's uh. Well, I guess twice at twice a month it it mm-hmm. wouldn't be as long. Ten years, yeah, eleven That's, years, yeah, no, no biggie. There you go. Let's head on down to IIDW. Dying is easy, part two, and we got all kinds of uh, covers on that one. Of course, dying is easy. The uh, story of the stand-up comedian and murder plots. Joe Hill writing that. Yeah, it's surprising for. Four covers on a, on a number two. I need W's try, been trying to do these 10 copy incentives, and on this one they went so far as to go the 25 copy incentive. Yeah, that's true. Was Rising Sun on the, on the list? No. It uh, looks like a samurai type story. From IDW. Yeah. Looks very interesting. What about clock number one? Did you already talk about clock? Yeah, we, we featured that for just a second on there. Matt Hawkins. Matt Hawkins, that's right. Yeah, from the Top Cow imprint. Within three weeks, hundreds of millions of healthy people worldwide contract various forms of aggressive cancer, and the proliferation, seemingly a viral outbreak, stumps the best scientific minds available. But after a leading cancer researcher loses his wife and watches his nine-year-old daughter become a th- become ugh, begin to succumb to the same illness, he must race against the clock to end a global conspiracy that could propel the world straight into World War Three, or even worse. So a nice little cancer comic. <laughs> oh, real pick me up. Yeah, but I, you know, he's written a lot of things that I've liked. Yeah, postal yeah. and such. Oh yeah, they're all pretty cool concepts. Mm-hmm. Which Some... means that we'll have clock. It'll run for about twelve issues, and then we'll have a clock colon. You know, <laughs> we'll have clock colon radiation treatment, and then <laughs> six months later we'll have clock colon chemotherapy. <laughs> Yeah, that's just you're probably not wrong. Top Cow awesome. does, but it will be interesting until that point. Uh-huh. Philadelphia going to a second print, so that's pretty cool from Image. Now, I saw he highlighted the Alex Ross um, Marvel's X, Marvel's 10. Yes, so we're flying Earth. right past other stuff. Yeah, so he... he... Now, you did you read the original Marvel's? I believe I've had it in my hand at some point in time. I don't. I don't think I had. Did Alex Ross write that original too? Somebody else. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I don't know. You don't know. I don't know either. Oh, why is Miles Morales the end? The final Miles Morales story. Humanity makes its last stand in the only place strong enough to survive. Brooklyn, former Miles 
Spider-Man Miles leads the last bastion of civilization into the future. You got a gray bearded Miles from back in the from way far in the day. Was this like old man Miles? Mm-hmm. Huh. I haven't been enjoying Miles like I used to. There you go. No offense to Saladin Ahmed, but um he ain't no Bendis. If it ain't grabbing you, it ain't grabbing you. Yeah. Star number one. Ooh, J. Scott Campbell. Hold on one second. Let me see what we got here. Oh. Yeah, now, did you end up getting that first appearance from uh, the, in uh, Captain Marvel? Her first appearance, Star? Yeah, I did end up with one of those. Mm-hmm. So you're rooting for this then. But of course. I want this to take off. Born of the reality stone, the breakout character from Captain Marvel flies solo. Ambitious reporter Ripley Ryan rocked New York City when she became the hero star. Adored by everyone, but in truth, she was Dr. Minerva's attempt at a Kree human super soldier. Desperate for the strength to control her own destiny, she tries to kill Captain Marvel, and she failed. Ripley is left defeated and powerless in the raft, or so she thought. The reality stone has found her, and now no prison can hold her. You think you know what the Infinity Stones were capable of? Think again. So, um... Is this a Spider-Gwen situation? Mm, I don't think quite that deep, but it's possible. You think it'll take? I don't I don't think it'll hit at all. Mm-hmm. I don't. I just don't. I hope it does, but I don't think it will. So much stuff. Ugh. A dearth of comics. Mm-hmm. Man. Yondu 4 of 5, the penultimate Yondu. Couldn't get into that one either. Did you check that out at all? I, I flipped through and it didn't. I was like, yeah. eh. Eh, that's exactly where I was. I was like, eh, I don't think so. This Red Agent Island of Dr. Moreau. What is it? Oh, Zenoscope. Yeah, we're moving on to a smaller publisher. Drew was oh. flying through this FOC. Oh, did you have some more Marvel you wanted to talk yeah, about? Yeah, we're moving on. Past the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. Did you watch the uh, Netflix toys that made a generation thing? I haven't. I heard there was a Ninja Turtle ones, though. The very first one's a Ninja Turtle one, and it it, it deals a lot with trying to get Eastman and Lard back together again, which was awesome. And did they? Yes. Are they cool? They they were in the room, chit-chatting, drawing together, and, and like old times at the end of it. It was, spoiler alert, my apologies, but well worth watching for uh, comic book fans. Because it talks about the early days of Mirage in their in their uh, living room and stuff like that. So, um, even if it, the toys weren't necessarily your wheelhouse, it's really cool to see the origin of that from a comic perspective as well. That is cool. Yeah, so make sure you check it out. It's only like it's less than an hour. It's pretty dope. I, yeah, I've heard that's a really good series. Mm-hmm. Toys that made us, or yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right, let's take. Uh, if there's no more. Let's shoot over to. Cover Price's top 10, where they have um, scoured, C-O-V-R-P-R-I-C-E dot com. They've scoured eBay, and um, they have collected the top 10 hottest selling um, eBay sellers of the week, and uh, included some spoilers uh, for some of them, for the reasons why they're so hot. So, you know, hope that doesn't bug you. There you go. You've listened to us enough, you know. Yeah, that, that that gets slipped out all the time. <coughs> uh, number one is Captain America 341. Sold 18 copies, around $12.50 each. As the first appearance of Battlestar, who is in the MCU. Announced. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number 33. It was in at number two, with selling fifteen at twenty-two dollars a piece. This is the first cover appearance of Ultimate Venom. In the third slot is Amazing Spider-Man three sixty-five. Of course, this is the uh, first appearance of Spider-Man twenty ninety-nine. So selling at ten dollars a piece raw. Eleven of them sold. Again, the graded nine eights are selling for one hundred and forty one. It's pretty. It's easy money. There you go. Easy money. Get that stuff slabbed. Um, 
Amazing Spider-Man 362, which is the second full appearance of Carnage. Uh, it's selling for thirteen fifty nine, on average. Fifteen of them sold. And Fallen Angels number two, a Momoko variant, is a one in twenty five ratio variant. And Momoko must be a uh, a new uh, cover artist that people are digging because that's sold for eh, twenty six bucks. That's not that great for a one in twenty five, right? Mm-mm. It's a cool looking cover though. Here's the Walking Dead, the Alien. This was the um, what's a comic book local comic shop day. Yeah. Uh, it, this is selling for sixteen dollars. I think it was nine. It, it launched at eight bucks, maybe. We told you to pick this one up. We were. Yep. Yep. First time in print. Uh, the this Walking Dead story uh, features Rick Grimes' brother. I uh, can't m- believe the, the the max is in movie news. That's just crazy. I know. Uh, Get it while it's hot, ladies and gentlemen. Raw average a dollar forty. <laughs> twenty of them, nearly twenty of them, sold for two bucks a piece. Um, they got somebody graded them at nine eight, and they got sixty bucks out of it. Uh, this uh, Channing Tatum uh, is wants to option this and make it into a movie. So there you go. Um, you just never know. I know I've I know I've had Max in my hands at mm-hmm. many times in quarter bins and dime bins, and I don't know that I have any left, but yeah. maybe maybe there's some laying around. <laughs> um, Better get that dollar forty. <laughs> yeah, the Amazing Spider-Man three forty six takes the eighth position, selling eleven for around eight bucks a piece, and this is just a classic. Venom cover. Uh, Philadelphia number one, the Black Friday variant, sold 19 copies, around $48 a piece. This is the Matina variant for a new image series. It is a 1 in 25. Mm-hmm. And Heartbeat number one, a, the Thank You variant, sold 17, with a raw average of about $30 a piece. It's a one per store variant with an awesome zombie cover. So that's, there's only 2,500 of those out there. There you go. All right. Uh, let's shoot over to Sneak Peek. Yeah, Shut this baby down. Previewsworld.com. Click over to new releases. Find December of the 11th, 2019. And let's start where we love to start. Let's start with Image. I love seeing a deli class. Uh, we're issue 42. This is one of the old guards now. <coughs> uh, no, I mean, we're kind of bearing the lead here, but you know, Drew and I are, are uh, have been talking about Lucy Claire Redemption since it was out in the previews. Um, yep. It is the return to the public eye of our good friend Rock Upchurch going back to the John Upchurch name, um, the one of the original creators of uh, Rat Queens that I so dearly loved and dearly missed when he uh, uh, left that title. So very much looking forward to both cover A and B of Lucy Claire Redemption. Looks like there was a lot of catharsis in the writing of this and creation of it, and I'm excited to check it out. Yes, definitely. I'm excited about Dying is Easy uh, from IDW, the first issue uh, is out this week. This is the Joe Hill book, and I've read some preview pages on it, and uh, looks pretty darn good. So I'm I'm excited about this one. Fourth printing for Spawn 300. Very cool. Third printing for Spawn 301. We told you guys to grab that one. And second printing for Spawn 302. Third printing for Undiscovered Country. Nice little wraparound variant, looks like, on the third printing. Might be worth picking these up. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the other. Man, those are completely different than I thought the covers would look like for Undiscovered Country 2. Interesting. They have changed them? Yeah. Yeah. 
So we went from just like the look of the map and everything to we've gone. Man, I love that Francis Manipold B cover. Holy crap, that's awesome. Oh, well, in the back of uh, the first issue, in the back matter, they talk about the cover design. And God, the guy goes on and on and on about all the different attempts he made on on designing that cover. I'm like, yeah, it's a cool cover, but it's like all these variations that he did and, you know, the letter would have like a little bit of a little tail on it and sometimes it wouldn't and, you know, the different shading and... Nobody uh, cares, art boy! <laughs> it just went on and on and on. And I was like, oh my God, you put this much thought into it and I barely glanced at it. Mm-hmm. I barely glanced at it. I thought somebody it. literally just took a photocopy of a map and just crank the white volume on it yeah yeah it didn't look like it took that much effort so that that was kind of the sad part about it that being told i did like the cover it's a good cover good cover yeah down to dark horse yeah i already jumped to dark horse talked about dying as as easy sure did um i'm down at dc actually you done to idw you skipped over all of dark horse all of Dark Horse. Straight yeah. to IDW, where right. we have TMNT ongoing number 100. Oh, I missed that, too. Tom Waltz, Kevin Eastman. Super weird to see more than four turtles on the front cover, but I'll get over it. I forgot about TMNT 100. No, no, there's only four. Never mind. I thought there was... Yeah, yeah, yeah on, the, on the B cover, there's more than four turtles. That's why I'm almost agreed freaked out yeah you knew what you're talking about i did i knew what i was talking about but be part of history eight bucks team and on going down to dc basket full of heads going to a second print that is awesome a dark knight returns back again i'll probably read this <laughs> even though i complained <laughs> about the last one i'll probably read it it's frank miller <laughs> i mean i'll probably read it Uh, Ocean Master, Year of the Villain looks pretty good. Yeah, I remember that being pretty cool. Cover there. Here's our Derek Chu on Supergirl 37. We were looking at the FOC at 38. Why the Last Man Omnibus hardcover? All 60 issues. Inglorious. Yeah. Pia Guerrera. Yeah, that's pretty nice. If you've never read Why the Last Man, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's one of the greats. One of the best of the post-apocalyptic. One of the best of a lot of the things. Oh, Tales yeah. From, yeah. Man, Tales from the Dark Universe, Multiverse, the Judas Contract number one. We are, we are going all in on this Judas Contract stuff. All right, now let's see what Marvel has for us. Doom 2099, I'm interested in this one. Uh, I checked out that Alpha 2099, didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I checked out the FF 2099, didn't like it. But I'm hopeful I'll like Doom 2099. Man, your girl Ashley Witter is so talented. Is she on uh, Afra? Fallen Angels number three. A really good Psylocke cover. Oh, uh, yeah. One of the better looks of Psylocke I've seen in a long time. I like her. She's good. Just don't give her an ongoing interior to do. <laughs> or you get scoriers once every year and a half. Season. That's why it literally comes out in season. That's true. That's true. It didn't overpromise, I guess. Couldn't have been more upfront with that. <laughs> uh, uh, Spider-Man. Symbiot Spider-Man, Alien Reality, number one. Peter David, Greg Land. Hobgoblin. Probably not going to read that one, but I will mm-hmm. read Spider-Man 2099 again. Especially since that's kind of going to be in the next uh, Spider-Verse movie, right? 
I'm assuming Miguel O'Hara will be featured. Uh, that's probably it for me. Yeah, a lot of a lot of true believers here, but none I think I even care about. Maybe yeah, like Nova. Maybe, yeah. Head on down to our smaller publishers. I like that first issue of BB Free. It was weird, but it's kind of interesting. And I've really been digging most of the Boom stuff. So um, I'm going to be checking that out. And we've got the Jeremy Hahn book, Red Mother. Mm -hmm. um, so he's not doing the, I think, or the beauty's finishing up or almost finished. Then he's moving right into this. That something is killing children. Number four. I really love that FOC variant. Breathers number one from It's Alive Comics. Justin Madison on art and everything. It's an eight dollar book. What? Yeah, Breather follows a small cast of individuals as they struggle to make sense of a dystopian world where they live in as a virus is unleashed in the air, rendering it deadly to humans. That's crazy. But Breather's number one has a Jeff Lemire and Matt Kent B cover. Yeah, I saw that. It's pretty. Yeah. Did you read Dog Eaters number one? No. Then we have Dog Eaters number three from Antarctic Press. Missed that one. You are obsolete on so its fourth issue. That's been really fun. And people love wasted space, man. something I need to check out and trade I think and that is all I had all I got so now there's only one question to ask Drew what is your pick of the week what's the one book to make sure you go into your local comic book shop this coming Wednesday snag up put in bag put in wow. board put in your box super Save. tough this is super tough and it's super tough knowing which one you're going to pick correct sir so because be you guy. could go in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. I think, like, old school Kyle's probably going to go TMNT 100, I think. Mm -hmm. But then he's really high on this Lucy Claire thing coming back. Mm -hmm. And so I just don't know which one you're going to pick. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be well one of you know me, sir. It's, I know it's going to be one of those, too. Um, so I'm going to steer clear of both of those. Oh, look at you. Let, I'm going to clear the runway. So you, you have your choice. And I'm going to go with Dying is Easy, the Joe Hill IDW book. I have already read the preview pages. I think it's quality stuff, and I hope it catches lightning in a bottle and takes off. There you go. And I'm going to say Lucy Claire Rebirth, number one, from Image Comics. I'm sorry, Lucy Claire Redemption, number one, uh, with art and writing by John Upchurch. Uh, we'll go ahead and say cover A, but I have both of them on order. And don't forget TMNT, number 100. Even though it's eight bucks, yeah, it's one hundred. Give That's them right. a break, right? That's right. <laughs> <coughs> so, oh, excuse me. I want to thank you for tagging along with Drew and myself through our sneak peek at next week. We are midway through December, which means we are just a few days away from the end of the year, where Drew and I should probably have already been talking about if we want to do best of the year <laughs> stuff. And not just realizing this right this second as I do this outro. So, um, if you guys have your best comic books of the year, we'll probably be asking for those next week. Because that's probably something we've done in past. In fact, I know it is. But anyways, <laughs> reach out to the podcast, be part of the podcast, and just be prepared for us to ask you what your best of 2019 is coming very soon. We may have to push that to January because we're ill-prepared. That happens sometimes. <laughs> so, I want to thank you so much for Drew and for myself. See ya.